Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. I lost count for the episodes. We're at 55 or something. Um, <laughs> uh, today we're going to have a look at the Red Crane, make it more reliable because I ran into a problem, of course. Um, last episode we talked about the magnet that is underneath the track at the end. It detects the end of the wagon, there's a magnet underneath the yellow wagon at the end, and based on that it knows when to stop the train. It worked like that until a few weeks ago when I rebooted this crane after one and a half years, and then it turned out that the magnet sensor over there is also detecting two connected magnets that wasn't before like that, but now it is. So I made a little Change to the program and said you need to count to four. One, two, three, and at the end of the wagon is the fourth magnet, and then the train needs to stop. It worked perfectly. A new temporary solution, but uh, as long as it worked, it was just fine. Then I started using the mask locomotive, and of course, it's a bloody container terminal. I need to use the mask uh, locomotive. So, I tried that one. Now, the magnet sensor at the end also saw the magnetic field of the motor of this train. So, I needed to make the program, I needed the program to make to count to five because the motor was also giving off a pulse that was detected by the sensor. So, when it did that, everything worked just fine. But I'm gonna interchange my locomotive is going to use this one, I'm going to use this one, and another one. So I'm not going to detect based on color or something which locomotive enters the station. I'm not going to do that. So I need to find another solution. So what I basically did was not making it count anymore. That's also the preferred option, of course. Because sometimes maybe it uh, misses an uh, account because the magnetic field isn't strong or something like that. So I made another sensor over here. There it is. And what this one basically does is that it sees the magnet underneath the train. So every train, every locomotive is going to have a magnet underneath it in the middle. And then the magnet here, the sensor detects the magnet. And then it knows that from that point on, it needs to start looking for the magnet. Because when this magnet passes the center, it's around this position. And the sensor is over here somewhere beneath the uh, wagon. You see there's no more magnets passing the sensor here, except for the magnet that is at the end of this wagon. So by doing so, it actually works just fine. But that means that I need to make some adjustments to uh, adjustments to the crane and that's what I'm working on right now. So um, yes, it detects also the motor electric uh, electromagnetic field. So actually with this train we have just one pulse here and with this locomotive we have actually two pulses, one from the motor and one from the magnet that is underneath, not underneath right now, but was underneath here. So but it, that's not a problem, because when the motor hits this sensor over here, the last magnet of the, uh, the coupling magnet between the wagons has already passed the sensor at the end. So no problem there. So to make this permanent, I need to, uh, needed to adjust the uh, crane a bit. So that was what I was doing right now. And since I've opened up the crane a bit, it's uh, a nice idea to uh, walk you through it a bit to see where all the cables go. So we start here from the uh, sensor and you see some multiple dark gray cables laying around. It's just one cable with two wires, but uh, these are the uh, a bit of extra length in case I need to replace this sensor a bit more to the curve or something like that. So I got the length here if I want to do that. And then it runs underneath here and you see here some additional cabling as well. You see the cabling from the uh, the motor, the uh, from the monorail motor switch, and uh, there's another motor over there. And those cablings you'll see also coming here, and all these cables go together to this point underneath 
here and they come out here it's hard to see here there we are some other cabling is coming also from uh, from here it's going to the motor and uh, sensor and uh, all those cables run underneath here some additional length here and then everything that is needed inside the crane it's here in a cable beam and then it's all the way through here to the middle where the actual cable beam starts and then it goes all the way here all the way inside and it comes out here so that's uh yeah a lot of wiring so the actual cable that runs from this point all the way around to the crane is more or less two and a half for three meters something like that plus extra length so let's let's say three meters so it's quite a lot so if you count up all the wiring that's going on in this crane alone it's ridiculous it's really uh <laughs> so since i was already opening up the whole thing i was like maybe i need to be wise and i need to install an additional uh, spare cable there was already a spare cable inside but that was a inside the uh, beam cable beam but that was just a just one wire that i needed to uh, which i can use to add a sensor or something for the read switch the magnetic switches sensors i need two wires so um, that's why i installed a blue wire which is additional which is not connected the loose end is here as you can see i'll just gonna hide it somewhere in this area and it runs also through the cable beam up here and it's also connected over there to uh, to the board that's the board with the uh, read switch connections and uh, you'll see some leds so when a um, read switch is activated you'll see the led li li light up so it's pretty uh, handy for me to actually calibrate the whole crane with uh, with this system all right i'm gonna build the crane up again and um, we're gonna test this uh, this new sensor with two locomotives already tested it uh, with uh, with the two locomotives that you see here just once I saw it work and I was like okay I have uh, I'm confident enough to uh, to make this uh, adjustment to the crane but I need to uh, actually test it uh, any further and there are some additional testing that needed to be done uh, concerning the crane itself and the positioning system which we'll discuss also in a bit I rebuilt the crane closed everything except for this sensor here um, which I'm still a bit fine-tuning which uh, the most uh, right position is but as far as I know the, this position here is just fine now I tried to have a look at the old software and there was this formula to uh, decide where the position of the wagons were based on this sensor and the position of this sensor and uh, but I couldn't get that to work I understood the basic principle of it but um, it didn't work and I don't know why it should have worked because it, it's looking at the uh, the reach this sensor particularly has in comparison to the reach of the crane itself and based on that on the amount of degrees of rotation of the motor for the sensor and the motor for the crane uh, you could say there's a certain factor that you can use and uh, that should be enough but that wasn't so i tried something else that didn't work either so i was left with no other option than actually tell the crane at which position of the sensor here at which position the crane needs to go so i made a table <laughs> and that's what you see here and this table actually uh, these are all the uh, rotations degrees of the sensor and based on that I measure the degrees of uh, rotations for the crane where the position of the last wagon should be and based on that I made a separate list here with uh, well as you can see if it's uh, for example 1000 then Y needs to be the Y is the uh, crane motor 
the y axis needs to be at uh, almost 4200 uh, but there's a gap as you can see I measured this sensor in steps of 50 degrees rotation more or less and um, so I needed to do divide the gap between these two measurements and these measurements so I came up with this list here and I programmed that and that works pretty well so um, yeah, and this is also valid for another locomotive as it only looks at the last wagon and not at the locomotive itself, only to this sensory, only to know when to look at that sensor. All right, so um, I built everything up. There's a, a few LEDs over there that you might see light up when the train arrives. Let me see what the right angle could be, something like this. So I'm going to start the monorail and I programmed it to uh, unload the uh, monorail to the train. So let's see what happens. What? Yeah, as you can see, it's very narrow here. I have to take a look at that. I don't think I can fix it, but we'll see. Sometimes that happens. Now the train is started and when the train passes the magnets or the uh, sensor you see flashes. And then stops at the right position. And now it's going to unload the monorail to the train. It's a bit off, but that's the uh, X coordinate, not the Y coordinate. So uh, easily to adjust. And this works just perfectly. And there it goes. Well, I'll shut it off otherwise it gets stuck. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test the Maersk locomotive. Which is uh, a bit longer. So uh, the coordinates will be different. And uh, let's see if that works as well. The Maersk locomotive is in place. And uh, let's hope it, it works. And I only use the red locomotive to test everything. So this is the first time that the mask locomotive is running onto the container crane. Oh, that's the wrong side. So I'm pretty curious if I did my job correctly. This motor is stronger, as you can see. It, it runs much, much faster. Let's see. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. Shut it down. So what you actually saw was this um, motor is stronger underneath the mask train. And uh, what you saw was that it came in with a higher speed than the red train. But uh, the system did it wor its work and completely worked flawlessly. Except for this little mistake here. It's just a little one. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not surprised that happens so now and then. The main thing is that when it's placed on a wagon like this, uh, the wobbling of the train can already... Uh, there was a bit of uh, too much wobble, but the wobble of the train can make it go there. That's why I installed these uh, slopes, of course. And if it doesn't, it'll get centered once it gets, gets picked up by, uh, by the crane, by the red one or the blue one. Because the, uh, the crabber itself is centered as well. So this works. So, um, yeah, I'm actually, yeah, very happy. <laughs> um, next up that we're going to talk about is, like I, I promised that last episode, I believe, is the, uh, the monorail shed. Um, there's one technical hurdle to cover for the cranes, and that is the communication between the uh, blue crane the overall control is already there, but the overall control needs to communicate with the red crane as well. 
and why why is that so we can do a full cycle so we can actually load a monorail over there and unload it here onto a train now i already secretly tested it and um, there's no communication between these two cranes right now through the overall control so i uh, did a little trick i bypassed it this is a spare uh, connection to the microcontroller and this connection here goes to the sensor that detects the monorail now normally the sensors and on monorail control is connected to the overall control which is situated at the blue crane but i made it uh, i made it wait for the monorail and by doing so i can actually already perform a complete cycle so what it basically does is it loads the uh, monorail over there in a the blue crane and then it sends the monorail on the tracks here and then this red crane is just waiting until it sees the monorail by the sensor and then it starts the, the train and then it starts looking for the train and everything that we see so after that so i already did that and i made a uh, reel out of it on Instagram and also short on YouTube I'll uh, link to it in the uh, in the description and um, the cool thing is that it worked and now you might ask oh, why do you need overall control for this red crane as well as it turns out it works like this as well well that has to do with the fact that the overall control needs to know where every train is and the overall control needs to tell the red crane when to load or unload because uh, the Red Crane don't, doesn't know that. There's a monorail arriving and it doesn't know if it has to unload or load or whatever. So that's the overall control that uh, you should tell them that. So that's a one technical hurdle, hurdle to take to uh, add some communication. I already bought a cable for that. It's over there, a multi-core cable. Uh, but that's something uh, we're going to check out later on. Next episode we're going to look at the monorail maintenance yet. And I have some cool ideas about that and um, so yeah i hope to see you then thank you for watching it's already uh, uh too long of an episode already again <laughs> sorry for that um thank you for watching and hope to see you next time bye